G'day guys, how are you? I'm Isky, welcome to my YouTube video. And look what I just picked up, how cool is that? It's another Fisher & Paykel condenser dryer. It's an eight kilogram machine. And check it out, it's in perfect condition. It's amazing, wow. So basically, um, <laughs> earlier on this year, I had this kind of motto, I would never work on one of these. I wasn't interested in condenser dryers because they were too difficult, blah, blah, blah. But um, yeah, about four months ago now, I worked on my very first one and it was also one of these. It was a Fisher & Paykel condenser dryer. I've since worked on a couple of other brands and I quite like them. I'm gonna, like I said in that first video, I'm gonna add that to my repertoire. This, you know, the condenser dryers and especially these Fisher & Paykels. Um, now that first video that I made was one and a half hours long. So hopefully we can keep this video down to a minimum um, yeah, more respectable type of time. But um, what's the deal with this? Let's check this out. I've got it plugged in. Let's actually power it up. Everything's looking good so far. Computer's looking good. Now let's hit play. Can you hear it? I can hear it. So something's going on. Something's going on, but the bowl is not turning. I can hear a sound. It sounds like the motor is actually turning and spinning, but um, nothing's happening. Now, with um, that very first, let's turn this off. In fact, let's power it down, and I will unplug that shortly. Um, now, with the first video, the problem with that that dryer was that it required a new what was it called? It was like this wheel, it was a guide. It guides the drum, so the, gum, the drum turns around. Now, it's definitely not that problem, so it's an all new kind of problem we're faced with. Um, if it was that problem, the drum would still go around, but it would be really rocky and bumpy and so forth, so you'd just have to replace that guide. But this is something else, and I think I know what it is, just you know, using your noggin and thinking about it. If the drum's not turning, but you can hear the motor spinning, the only thing, in fact, first of all, let's troubleshoot it a bit more. Let's open this up. Now, let's stick our hand in here and see if we can turn the drum. And I can turn the drum. And it is, there's a bit of friction in there. It feels like the belt is still attached. All right, let's work that out. So if the belt is still attached and the motor's turning, but the drum's not spinning, what do you think that could be? Well, I could be wrong, but that sounds a hell of a lot like the idler is stuffed. And the best part is, um, I actually pulled one of these machines apart. You may have seen the second video that I did. I did this teardown of another machine that I had to help fix that first machine, and I pulled all the parts. And they just happened to be in this box here. So let's have a look in here. So these are the parts that I scavenged out of that. Now, this is our... Oh, let's pull this out. So that's the motor, the capacitor, and this is our idler. In fact, how's that, how's that put on? Uh, I'm not sure how that's put on. Oh, it looks like it's, it looks like it might be a circlip. I'll have to check that out in a bit more light. But um, I reckon it's this part. I think we just need a new one of these. This one looks like it's in very good shape. So if it is that part, that's what we'll be replacing today. So let's get into it. I'm not really sure. I have a bad feeling about this. I have a feeling that um, we may have to actually pull the bowl out just to get to that part. We'll see. And there's normally a bit of housing that goes over this. So we may even have to take that off. Oh, wouldn't it suck if we had to take the entire thing out? But um, we'll suss it out um, and see what we can do. All right, so now that is on this side of the machine. That's why I've got this machine turned around this way. So let's just set you down here and um, open this thing up. Now the best part is, I'm pretty sure I remember how these things opened up. Let's just close that door. I'm gonna unplug this machine and I'm going to actually reset this camera over here. There we go. Now, first thing I'm gonna do is take the top of this machine off. Let's just move that forward. One, 
two. You'll be able to work that out. These two screws are just on the each corner of the top underneath. Pull that off. Now, if I remember correctly, there were also screws underneath this bottom edge that need taking off. Yes, Do, are there, hang on. In fact, I'm not sure if there are. There are two screws there, but I don't know if they need to come out. I don't think they do. Well, let's keep going. At the back here, you can see we definitely need to take that one out. Oh, look, somebody's already had a go at fixing this by the looks of things. There's one, two, three screws missing. Interesting, okay. <laughs> Why didn't they fix it? Must have been too difficult. All right. So I'm just gonna remove this last screw down here. That's what happens with a lot of people. They give it a go and they kind of, um, they kind of give up pretty quickly. Now, up here, let's have a look up the top here. You can tell just here, there's normally a screw. You can actually see the indentation of the washer. It's one of those. Um, compressed star washers like the lock washers and we'll need to undo that one whoops hang on let me get you back <laughs> sorry about that I had my <laughs> gimbals on too much of an angle yeah so I reckon we'll have to undo this one and that one that's what I did last time at least and then we should be able to take that entire side section off Just show you that one so I don't forget as well. That's one of those kind of hex washers. And this one here, well, this isn't actually the right screw for that hole because you can see there's a, a washer indent, one of those lock washers as well. So they've just put screws back in just to hold this on to take it to the dump, I think. Okay, now I'm hoping this should just come out. Let's give this a go. I'll just set you up here. Is that going to pull out? Oh, yes. I was convinced. Actually, this might have to be pushed down and then lift it up so let's try that out <clears throat> okay so I'm gonna try there are a couple of screws underneath there I like I mentioned before um, it doesn't it didn't actually look like they were holding this on but I could be wrong I think I might be, I don't think I am wrong. I think I'm correct. We'll have a look. Oh, in fact, I have a feeling maybe this is sandwiched in between. So there's one at this end. One, don't know where that flew off to. There we go, and it was holding it on. So look at this, there we go. So that looks like it's free. Lift it up, pull it off. Okay. All right, so I don't think it's, the, <laughs> the idol's looking pretty good. I mean, unless, so that's spinning like that. Or maybe the idler is, oh, let's have a look. So I'll show you, the idler's looking intact. The idler, you can see it just here. It's looking good. Like I can go like this and turn it and that's working fine. So what's the deal? Maybe it's a motor. The motor's just not turning. So I guess the other thing it could have been was the capacitor, but it sounded like something was turning. Um, 
Listen, I'm going to plug it back in. Let's plug it back in and turn it on now that we can see what's going on. She's plugged in. I'm going to hit power. Nothing. Oh, maybe it is. The oh, look at that. Did you see that? Okay, so <laughs> this is really good news. Did you see how all I needed to do was pull that belt to start turning that drum and it started going? That's because this capacitor needs to be replaced. All right, let's pause that. <laughs> Man, that's an easy fix. Why didn't that, why didn't they fix it? Why did they not fix that? Okay. Okay, check this out. Well, we just happen to have ourselves a capacitor on the end of this. What's the um, values of this? So this capacitor is 8 UF. So that is exactly like the Simpson, Electrolux and um, Westinghouse capacitors. We could stick a brand new one in, but I reckon we should pop this one back, this one in. I mean, this is a metal capacitor. In fact, this is the very first metal capacitor that I've ever come across that has been you know, faulty, so <laughs> I want to stick that other one back in. All right, let me just grab a, um, a spanner. Wow. Somebody tried to threw this out for a $10 part, really? Okay, so when you want to replace a capacitor, make sure you unplug it, okay? Definitely unplug your machine. You don't want to go touching these two without unplugging it. All right, one, two. All right, that's tightening it. There we go. Okay. Wow. So I think that's that's um, dead. All right, let me just grab this other one. Okay, this is our one from our donor. Let's pop that in. And I need to get this nut back off this old capacitor. Why are you getting tight? Why are you not going in? Did I cross the threads? No. It's just a bit, must just have some crap on the thread. All right, let's tighten that up. All right. Now, let me just slide that on there. And let's slide that on there. Okay, do we want to try this out? Let me just sit you here. Let me just turn this on. Oh, I'll have to plug it in. Now, power, let's hit play. Wow, it's like a jet engine now. Okay, that's looking beautiful. That is looking really nice. But having said that, I'm not convinced that's all that's wrong with this machine, um, to be honest with you. Now, um, and do you know why? Remember how I said that it sounds like the idler's not spinning? Well, the reason I thought that is because it sounded like something was actually, oh, I don't know. I'm thinking that, um... all right, sorry about that. I had to do a bit of troubleshooting off by myself because remember earlier on when I first started this video, I said it sounded like the idler was stuffed. 
Well, the reason I thought the idler was stuffed was because I heard that strange sound. Um, it sounded like the motor was spinning, but um, because the bowl wasn't turning, it just sounded like maybe the idler was broken off, which means the belt's not going to have any tension and the bowl won't spin. And uh, then while I was replacing this capacitor, I started thinking to myself, maybe that sound that I was hearing is the fan, one of these fans, there's two fans. You can see on here there's two fans. Maybe one of these is broken free and it's not spinning while the motor spins. But then I thought, well, the motor wasn't spinning, so it can't be that, it can't be that. So I thought about it some more. This took me a whole four minutes of thinking, by the way. And um, then I just remembered this machine here has a water pump in it. So that sound that I was hearing when we turned it on initially, well, that's the water pump. So I'm pretty sure, I'm fairly sure the water pump is on this side of the machine, if I remember correctly, and it pumps the water from here up into this water reservoir here. You know, the one that we replace every time that we do a load. So that was that sound, that's what I was hearing. It was a water pump, and that's the exact sound that they make is what I was hearing earlier on. So that's it, that's it, that's the easiest fix ever. I'm so happy. So anyway, I'm gonna go and edit this video, publish it. Um, I'm gonna also throw in some washing right now. I'm gonna put this back together. That's an easy thing. I'm not gonna put you through watching me do that. That's simple. Oh man, look at that. I love the way these things are always really clean inside. You don't have to blow them out or anything. There's no lint or anything. So yeah, I'm gonna throw some washing in here, test it out, make sure it works great, and then I'm going to sell it. So awesome. Anyway guys, I'd like to say thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.